Thank you, Volka. That was a very insightful um, presentation for the project. Have you got any questions, anybody? Please. I have a question. Um, once you have all the terms in there and have them arranged somehow, I mean, the, the, the key benefit is to have these normalized, identifiable terms, whatever you would call them, to the real objects, to the material culture, to sites, to anything you have in archaeology. We know, I mean, these, these terms are useful because we attach them to objects, sites, yeah. buildings, and so on. And my question would be, where do these terms and these objects reside besides the Arachno works? Uh, in any project that uh, gives our d uh, data, uh, gives but, the but, data. But do you, do you store also the, the pots which have the term Neolithic? Or do you just. Well, well um, if we can, then yes. So, for example, uh, within the DAI, we are trying to uh, make a tight integration of projects. So, for example, in the Gazetteer, you can say, show me all um, objects in Arachne that are connected to this region with this ID. Um, you will have the same for chronontology. This will work uh, in, in many directions. Um, for other projects, um, it may also happen. It's just a question of uh, having the connection uh, in, an, in another direction. Or So the system, like the gazetteer, can actually know this information by caching it or by, by retrieving it and caching it and having it or just send you to the other uh, system and say, Dear Arachne, give us the information with this specific ID. And so then the link in the gazetteer is only a convenience. Both versions are possible. And uh, I think uh, maybe you want to correct me if I'm saying something completely wrong, but we're trying to make a t as tight an integration, at least within the DAI systems, as possible. And if a system from, uh, from outside the DAI is uh, in a position to have stable data where we can be sure that it's still there in five years' time, then we would also be happy to uh, connect to the system. Um, also, thank you very much for a nice presentation. Um, I have a question about your introduction. You showed these idle periods from Martin Dürer, these eight, yeah. eight terms. Why are they idle? Because the Neuen, yeah, you said they are perfect terms? Or ideal. ideal. Uh, I mean, what I mean is that uh, they are not ideal in that version that is uh, visible there. So this is more like a proof of content, a content uh, proof of concept. Concept, sorry. Um, what I mean with ideal gazetteer is that um, Martin Dörr's vision is to have one ideal gazetteer where the information about all the concepts that you want to talk about converges. So you start, for example, with Crete, the island of Crete, where you have a bounding box. It's a where, so it's like putting a shoe in a shoe box and you say, well, the shoe fits into this box and you think, yeah, well, that is actually technically true, but that doesn't say if it fits my foot, foot or not. It's just a box. But at least it means that it's not in the room, uh, in, in the next room. So uh, you at least have this information. So and then his idea is to, to approximate the real region of Crete uh, as much as possible and sometimes it's easier for Crete it's easier um, if you don't take a moving uh, coastline because of some earthquake but some regions have more fuzzy boundaries especially over time but they might be even fuzzy at a specific point in time like where is my boundary in the, in the desert and um, he also thinks that Place gazetteers and time gazetteers should also actually converge. So you have periods that have a space-time volume, which means like um, 
say Augustan political means all points in time and space where Augustan was recognized as the emperor, for example. Um, and you can have the same about a city. All places in time uh, where the city was. So Rome was very small at the beginning, then it became large and large and large and larger, and then it became small again. So, and people were wondering, how did they ever were able to, to build the Pantheon or so? And it's a strange building here, but uh, we don't really care. We, we turn it into church, but uh, at least our, the area that we inhabit uh, gets smaller, and then it becomes, of course, much bigger in the 20th century. So you also have a space-time volume, which somehow is distinguishable from, from periods, uh, from other periods in that sense that, as I said, places tend to stay at the same time, normally. Um, sometimes they move. Um, and you could have a one system that describes or that lists all phenomena, cultural phenomena like the reign of Augustus, the city of Rome, Germany, um, that have such a space-time volume. And this is an ambitious goal, um, but this is what I mean with ideal. So this is the first glimpse of an ideal world, and uh, maybe it's not only the first, but also the last glimpse, because uh, we have so different data, but uh, at the end of the tunnel, uh, this is the light. <laughs> Um, I've got a question. You have these um, categories for, for the words where you say follows after for, for the time period yeah. when, when they happen. Do you also have something like they happen at the same time? Yes, yes. So the Ellen relations can describe really every relationship. So uh, Ellen relations uh, describe um, relations of time intervals where you suppose that you know the exact time uh, for example the 20th centuries the 20th century ends exactly when the 21st century end, uh, starts um, so you can have this interval before that it can go into this it can be completely in there it can yes so um, and of course this is not something that you have in archaeology most of the time that you have specific a very precise precise information when something ends and starts and this can be to, due to your lack of knowledge or this can be due to there is no precise ending or so uh, we were discussing for example births uh, where you need to define what does it mean that a birth starts and when it ends so you can have different uh, definitions and then even if you have a precise def definition, it doesn't mean that you actually know when, it, uh, when uh, according to your definition, it starts or ends. So is it when the first glimpse of the head uh, is visible, or is it when, uh, when you cut the cord? Well, the cord, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, I forgot your question. <laughs> All oh, right. Okay. And it was about um, if you, you can also have things that happen at the same time. But yeah. um, I, I, I just wanted to say that uh, that there is a new system in the making that can cater for these uncertainties at the <laughs> beginning and end of time intervals. Okay. And um, concerning the data you already have in the system, is it all connected, or do you have like some parts of it, like for example the um, Bronze Age and the Levante that are like a bubble in the system and are not connected to other time periods? You can connect it. So if there is a, a logical connection then you can make the connection and if there's just a temporal connection, whatever, mm -hmm. the Mayas also having an em empire at the same time as the Roman Empire you can make the statement, but normally you would not make explicitly the statement because it just happened to be at the same time. And uh, 
just as a geo system can find out from two polygons if they actually intersect or not, mm -hmm. you can have the same with uh, space-time volumes or with, with uh, regions uh, over time. And, uh, but you can. And again, it's a question of how good is the data that we get. And we have worked very long on uh, the Getty AAT data. And uh, uh, just to, to create an example of how it sh could look like, but uh, normally we won't get data of, of this fine greenness. Okay. Just uh, as in Gazetteers. Um, you mentioned uh, in uh, the uh, review of your data sources uh, the secondary literature and uh, the bibliography of different subjects. I was wondering if you can tell us how this uh, uh, is done as a digestion process. I mean, it's done manually now, so somebody is still putting uh, the, the time expression. Natalie, do you like to answer this? Now it's still done manually. I mean, we should be able to have like a way to analyze the data where we find the sentences where period is mentioned and get the date and so on, but now at the moment it's just me. Are you producing any annotation of the data at the moment? So we, we don't, we are not in the, the, the uh, habit of, of named entities as yet, uh, so, uh, but we are happy to discuss this and uh, it is a straightforward extension of the system, it's just a question of Time and uh, of, yeah, of, of manpower, someone needs to do it. <coughs> but <laughs> we can discuss this anytime. Just to follow up on this, I think what you are going to have with name and this in text, it's in addition to the time concept, also lots of dates. Yeah. So it's also a question of how do you align a date mentioned in an article yeah, yeah. with your time as a year. So I think it's yeah. um, since you don't use the, the, the yeah, start and end date as something that defines the, the, the concept in the examples, then it's a question of. But yeah, that's an interesting it's, question. It's a, it's a good point. Um, so, of course, you have uh, different calendar systems, or you can have uh, uh, with the Aegean Bronze Age, you can have. Uh, datings that are relative to uh, the eruption of a volcano where you don't know when it was. So all the dates can move 200 years forth and back. Um, and uh, I hope we can uh, cater for that at some point. Uh, so what we have already is that you can um, specify the calendar system that you are using um, when you mention uh, giving a date. Um, uh, in the best world, we would have a universal um, exchange rate system. Um, but again, this is something that we need to discuss. And then I have I have two questions. One is not mine. Was asked on Twitter, and I think you did a good job already without knowing answering the question. Because I was asking about uh, periodo and chronology and application of the forts. What are the differences? How are they complementary? And I think you explain. So I, I try to do my best to retrieve your replies. Uh, but I think we can follow up on that, asking in the longer term, how are the two projects going to collaborate, converge? My, uh, my thought was that since it's all linked over data, might make sense in some cases to say this period is the same as yeah, that yeah. period and period. So is it something you are planning? In, in the best of all worlds, yes. I, again, it's the question of uh, if you have lists of, of uh, periods um, where the time and the place is part of the definition, it's difficult to say if you actually can match them, but we will try our best and uh, as Valeria knows, being now employed by Pelagios. Um, we have uh, at the last Pelagios meeting uh, started a time gazetteer group where Adam Rabinovitz uh, also participates and I hope that our efforts converge there and uh, that we can create something that works together. And the second question is um, are you exposing already the RDF 
representation of the CDUX CRM, which is underlying the data, or are you planning to expose it? Uh, yes, at some point we, we explicitly need to model it uh, with uh, CDUX CRM. At this moment, it's uh, our custom um, uh, JSON format where, where you have verbs like has core area because it is in the data and we are not in the business of changing the data. If we get this data that is uh, wobbly on both sides then we have to write down the wobbliness and of course um, then you need an abstraction layer of how can I um, describe this in the CDOC CM way. This wobbliness um, uh, fortunately will be able to describe, uh, uh, can be described uh, soon by a new system of relationships for wobbly intervals. Uh, but at other points, um, well, our data model has in mind that it wants to be modeled in CDOC CM at some point. And so most of the time it is uh, fairly straightforward, but at some points uh, the bitter reality sets in and uh, we only have the data that is just there. And but the JSON that you are exposing right now, can you convert it already to RDF? Is it JSON-LD or is it just JSON? Yeah, yeah, it's just JSON at the moment. Yeah, but just, just Sebastian wants to say something to that. It's, um, it's actually modeled as JSON-LD, okay. but we're not um, exposing the context right now. So yeah. it's basic JSON, but um, the one thing that we need to add is the context of the URIs for the properties. So it's quite straightforward. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so we can put it in a, into an RDF soup quite easily. Anybody else? Yeah, just a small technical question for that. Um, what kind of true store, and especially what kind of reasoner are you planning to use? Bad question. <laughs> <laughs> Still, um, open. So uh, the there were three different uh, the triple store is an eternal different question. There's always someone saying, "Well, I have a new triple store. It's just like a new beauty cream, and it works better than all the beauty creams before." And you think, "Yeah, well, I've heard this before." But um, so we had three different uh, reasoning things, and one uh, is this trivial thing. If A is part of B, then B is contains A. So if Middle Augustine is in Augustine, then Augustine is has part of Middle Augustine. And so this is actually taken care of when you enter data already, even in the data enter uh, data editor. That uh, these these trivial reasoning things, uh, so that, that no data enters the system where this is not complete. So you and make this information explicit? Or this, this, data, uh, this information is explicit. Okay. And then uh, this information that uh, middle Augustine, middle Augustine uh, I won't say it again, but um, uh, where the, the, the def uh, definition uh, relationship implies the temporal relationship, this is done uh, automatically at this point in the import script so that it is explicitly written in the JSON that you have uh, the, the normal relationships and then a part inherited and then the temporal relationships and uh, of course the import script is not the right place for this actually you should have a service that goes through the data every night or so and, and uh, does this uh, but this is not there yet and uh, again with this inheriting of region, regions or inheriting of time uh, that middle Augustine is in the time span of Augustine um, is also something that a script should do overnight somehow uh, or some, some caching mechanism should be there um, it's a goal for 2017 Okay, if nobody else has questions open or wants to ask questions in the artificial part with wine and so on. I thank you very much, Wolfgang, again. Um.